national government has pledged to assist the free state provincial government to revive the local econ economy of Yakhersfontein. The small town was affected by the mine dam collapse in September last year. More than 200 people were displaced and over about 100 houses were destroyed and two lives that were lost while another remains missing. Let's now speak to the Yakhersfontein Developments spokesperson, Billy Pilangulu, for more on this matter. Thank you so much for your time. Very briefly, tell us about, um, you know, the thinking of building the houses were just very close to the mine once again. Thank you very much, sis, um, and good evening to your viewers as well. Uh, look, the, the issue of uh, deciding where the houses should be built was not a decision that was taken by the mine. I think uh, if you go back to our consultation with government, it has been that after the disaster, we engaged government and said, look, we want to work hand in glove with them from the local government to the provincial government so that we can resolve the problem. Uh, one was to say would have to adhere to all the directives that they've given us. There were a lot of directives that were issued at the time and uh, as, a, as a company we needed to adhere to those and we've done was it one of the directives to what, what, today? one of the of that no the the government at the time during the incident they actually offered to build the houses but uh, as you know government policies that they can only build a uh, certain size of houses mm -hmm. which you know you, you guys call the rdps and we came forth and said no you don't have to spend the money on building the houses we as the man want to take responsibility to rebuild these houses and we want to replace an apple by an apple and that's exactly what we we have committed uh, unfortunately what we have not uh, both of us from ourselves to to government we had not uh, foresee a situation where some of the directives which were meant to protect the people would enter the process of building the houses in the long run and i'll tell you there was a directive that says anything that is in a streamline must not be touched and you'd know that the, the streamline would include those houses that were taken away and, 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 and. So there was a process that we needed to follow to ensure that this, the, we can assure the safety of people in that area. One of the, of the processes was for us to appoint a, what we call an APP, an approved professional person. In the country, you've got only 12 of those. And unfortunately, when we approached all of them, none of them wanted to work with uh, the disaster. So it took us a while, a process that could have taken us a month. It took us close to four months. And wh while we're doing all of these things, government as well tried to get an APP for us, and they couldn't. At some point later in, uh, in the uh, earlier this year, we found an APP, and whom a government gave them uh, what they need to submit for them to be able to approve. Uh, uh, their program. There's a program, there's all of those requirements that were required. I'd, I'd, I'd like us to listen to um, Richard Spur. We spoke to him here on the show last night. There's quite a lot that he said, but, um, you know, he, his concern also stems from the assessment that was done here. But I'd, I'd like you to listen to him and then respond afterwards. We don't believe that there's a proper understanding of the risks and the hazards to which the community is currently exposed. The information we have at our disposal suggests that the tailings that spilled in September last year are extremely toxic, dangerous to people, dangerous to animals, dangerous to the environment, and that it is not appropriate to re-establish this community um, where, where, where they currently are and where they were displaced. We don't think there's been a proper investigation and we don't believe there's any proper understanding about the risks and the hazards to which the community is exposed and to which the wider community is exposed mm -hmm. um, because of the contamination of water um, in the Southern Free State. How do you respond? Look, I, uh, everything that uh, uh, Richard is saying, he's thinking, is not giving you facts. And I think government uh, investors, we've got two investors that have done uh, those assessments, and those are academics, those are specialists. 
we have not taken initiative to do uh, those research because we are not uh, uh, specialized in that area. We have allowed people that are doing uh, that are that are working with that to do exactly that. Uh, on my way here, I actually spoke again with uh, the Department of Environmental in the province, and they said the same thing to say, look, we need facts that uh, uh, Mr. Spock can present and say there's a there's a different view mm. besides the report that we have. We do have a report that was done, like I'm saying. By he the, says he does. No, no, no. Then he must and provide. And he says he must he's been it trying to. to to meet with the mine, he's been trying to meet with everyone involved in order to be able to share this so that you all can come to the table and find some kind of common ground. We, we have opened uh, communication with everyone including himself and his, the people that he's representing. We have actually established an office specifically to deal with this incident uh, in the, in outside the mine. So the community knows that they, they are able to access us at any point. And I would want to sit here and discuss facts. Like I'm saying, there's a reports that, that, that were done. The studies were done by professionals and we've got them. The government is aware of that and that, that is the only report that we are aware of. If there's any other report that needs to be presented to us, of course it will come to us. We'll, we'll interrogate get those and we'll be able to, to 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 respond accordingly at this point government would never allowed us mm. to build in this area if a proper assessment was not done so are you then um, saying that you haven't heard or you've heard maybe of some of those that have started getting sick um, some people having issues probably coughing up blood and getting sick as a result have you heard of anything like that? I live in Jagasfontein myself. After the incident, I had to find myself staying there. So I live in that area on a daily basis. And you would understand that from September last year, we've been taking responsibility of the medical expenses of those people that have been affected. And at no point have we ever received any medical claim. And this claim comes from those that are also represented by uh, Mr. Spoor. So if, if at any point this was the case, we would have known because we are paying for the expense for these expenses. So if if that those expenses have not come to us, then we will be shocked to know that there's such incident. So will you be shocked or even how concerned are you of the possibility of future litigation in this particular matter? No, no, no. Uh, in this instance, we are expecting litigation. Uh, litigation is normal. Mm. We we understand that people must exercise their rights to to litigate. At the same time people who are exercising their, their right to negotiate and settle with us. So directly. would you then be open to a conversation with him? Because when, when I was asking him on the show, I said, so do you foresee then a negotiated possible outcome of either maybe a settlement or whatever you sit at the table and you agree upon, or is this matter likely to end up in the courts? And his response was, um, you know, the, 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 the litigation is usually the last resort. We try to sit down at the table to be able to reach an understanding. So is that door open and is it something that you potentially would be starting with him? We, we, we have discussed and, and opened up to the community and say, listen, we have got an office that deals with this thing and ours is to settle. We don't want to go to court. We, we don't have the money to go to court because that money that we're going to spend going to court is supposed to be spent on people. And if, if, if we can avoid by all means, we would. But in, it's unfortunate that uh, Mr. Spo would want to have discussion with myself uh, instead of having the, this discussion with uh, our legal team. And that is the wrong approach. As long as there's, a, there's a lawyers, they must discuss at their learned level, not with ourselves uh, uh, as, as, as mine, uh, or, uh, managers and so forth. So we've allowed that processes. And, and Mrs. Poe and everyone else, they know who to speak to. Our lawyers uh, open up this conversation and we've given them strict instruction as well to say, look, we don't want to litigate, we want to settle. Uh, unfortunately, when, when, when it comes from a, a lawyer as well, there's processes that need to be, to be followed in that regard. All right. Dr. Uh, Bilankulu, thank you so much thank for coming. You. Do appreciate your time. That was the Yahar Fontaine's Developments spokesperson, uh, Billy Bilankulu. And remember, this is at the back of the conversation we had yesterday. So we had to give them a right of reply to also be able to air their side of the story.